I take out a yellow pad and I put it in front of my client. I write the word freedom, except it's not spelled freedom, it's spelled F-F-R-E-E-D-M. And I write it down the left-hand side of the page. Hmm? And I say the first F stands for financial planning. The second F stands for uh, family income. The R stands for retirement. The E stands for education. The second E stands for uh, estate planning. Hmm. D is disability income. And M is mortgage. That's great. And I write this out. And I say the reason that this, this is the way it is because over my career, people have asked me to help them solve these particular problems. And so I one day decided to make an acronym out of yeah. it because I kept on writing these words down yeah. and I kept on moving around and I thought, oh, great, freedom. Yeah. Fina and so I call it financial freedom. Do you, do you then throw it back to them and say, which one of those do you want to work well, on? Well, here's what I do. I yeah. turn the page around, I hand them my pen, I say, I want you to number these things one through seven. Wow. So the number one we will, we will address first, and number seven will address last, but we will address every one of these over the course of working together. That's great. So tell me which ones you want to start with first. Wow, that's so important. You've, you've given them a picture, you've told them a story, and you put them in charge. Yeah. I mean, that, this, this is great, it's great yeah. stuff. Well, I want, to, I want to tell you about my picture. Please. Yeah, the, probably the most successful thing that I've um, uh, incorporated into my appointments is to, I've always had an agenda, but about 15 years ago, I started putting three bullets at the top of that agenda that are blank. They're blank out to the right of it. They're just three bullets and there's agenda one through three or one through five items. And they're, the one through five items are fairly standard stuff. Uh, current situation, uh, product review, um, so forth. And I start out and I, I look at a client and I say, thanks for coming in or thanks for letting me come to your office. Uh, before we get started, tell me what has to have happened when we finish in 45 minutes or so, make you glad that we met. So you realize that this was a good meeting and I'm quiet. Sometimes somebody will say, well, I don't know, you asked for this meeting. So then it's back to me. But more than likely, they'll say, well, I really want to learn more about my life insurance. My banker said I needed some life insurance. I don't know about my group benefits. Uh, my wife and I are trying to make sure we don't wake up broke when we start retirement. I mean, they'll, they'll come up with some things. That they allowed me to come into their space or they came into my space for a reason. And what I want to find out is what that reason is. And so what I'm trying to do is exactly what you did, give them a picture, ask what's on their mind, and put them in the power seat. Now it's their meeting, it's their agenda, and we're gonna talk about those things. And before we're through the meeting, I go back to that agenda page, and I'll look at those things that they said that they wanted to, to accomplish. And I'll write down just what they tell me. I write them down, I wanna paraphrase, uh, and I wanna use some of their words. And we'll go back and review that at the end of the meeting, and towards the end of the meeting, and say, let's see, we did this, we did this. Oops, we did, we did, we did not talk about your 401k. Let's, you said you wanted to talk about that. What's, what's on your mind there? And it, it just helps so much to keep the meeting on track for them. We go into our meetings so often, we want to keep it on track for us. Yeah. But that's yeah. not, that's not yeah, It's point. all about them, isn't it? It's it really not about is. us, it's it, about them. It really is, yeah. yeah. One of the things that I've done that's um, been helpful too, along with um, sort of ideas that work, is um, drawing three buckets on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And there's the taxable bucket, mm -hmm. and there's the tax deferred bucket, and there's the tax free bucket. I love that. And we put their assets, which assets are in your taxable bucket? Well, that's your income, your savings accounts, they grow by tax free, your investment account if you have one, if you inherit some money that's gonna grow tax, taxable. So those are all in your tax taxable bucket. And what's in your tax deferred bucket? Those are your 401ks, perhaps you have your 403bs, your retirement plans. Uh, real estate is, it can be tax deferred. Mm -hmm. uh, real estate can also be in the tax-free bucket. Mm -hmm. Our residents, we get a break on that with federal taxes and things. Um, and then what's in the tax-free bucket? Roth IRAs, life insurance, some types of real estate, some, some types of bonds can have some tax-free nature to them. 
And so we, we work with our clients to say, where are your assets? And what we'll find so often is that large percent, 70 percent, will be in the taxable bucket. And if they're not most of them there, then they're going to be at least half of them there and almost the other half will be in the tax deferred bucket. Nothing's in the tax free bucket. Mm -hmm. And we have a bright and shiny new product that's available in that tax free bucket. Mm -hmm. And all we've got to do is explain it and show it and people will want it because they understand the, the difference between their assets and how it's so important. My wealthiest clients wake up at retirement and they have uh, m no debt, they have a whole big pile of retirement benefits, and they have a whole big pile of what we call non-qualified benefits that are either growing tax-deferred or tax-free. And so when they want to go to Europe, they pull a lump sum, or they want to buy a car, they pull a lump sum out of the tax-free bucket rather than the taxable bucket. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they want income, they pull it out of the taxable bucket because the law requires them to. So it's a wonderful concept that gets people thinking about how their assets are, are labeled. Do you, yeah. do you do something like that? I do. Uh, uh, I, I tell people, uh, uh, my job is to get you as close to a zero tax bracket of retirement as possible. There you go. Yeah. So, and there's only one product that gets you there. Only mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And that's cash value life insurance. It's a Roth IRA on steroids. It is. Yeah. It is. And it has so many other benefits that Roth IRAs don't have. Yeah. For example, you become sick or hurt and you can't work yeah. and you can't make the payments to your Roth IRA. Do the payments continue? Yeah. No. Yeah. Become sick and hurt and can't work. Yeah. The payments into your whole life insurance mm -hmm. policy are guaranteed to be made by us, not by yeah. you. And, and you know why? It's because Congress designed the Roth IRA. Of course. And they're limited. That's and, why. and our industry designed the life insurance product, and, and we're not. That's the reason. That's where the difference is. Yeah. And, and, and when somebody dies, you get what's ever in the Roth IRA plus whatever it earns. When you die owning permanent life insurance, you get 10 times, 20, 50, 100 times the value of what you've put into it as a death benefit. It's a balloon payment. Tax exempt. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. Nothing like it. And where do we learn all this stuff? MDRT. Who, who, where are our teachers? Oh who are our gosh. teachers? Our friends are our teachers. And that's why that's why people keep coming back. That's why, why we, the last MDRT we had in 2017, there were 13 or 14,000 people there. I learned a long time ago, it costs more to stay home than it is to come to the meeting. <laughs> I went to a meeting a few months ago. And one of the speakers talked about long-term care and critical illness insurance. Mm -hmm. Critical illness has been real big in the UK and in Canada, but it's just now getting a foothold in the US. And, uh, and this one speaker said, if you're not talking to your 60 plus year old clients about long-term care and critical mm -hmm. illness, you run the risk of being sued for malpractice because you didn't mention this to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I did when I came home from that meeting, I developed a letter to send to them saying, uh, I want to talk to you about critical illness and long-term care, mm -hmm. and, and I want to meet with you because yeah. I have an obligation. You're on my client. I have an obligation to speak to you about this. Mm -hmm. If you say no, that's okay, but you're going to sign a letter that says, yeah. I had the opportunity to say yes, and I said no. Yeah. By the way, one of the things I learned at this meeting don't talk to your clients, your 60-year-old client. Talk to their kids right. about this because guess what? The kids are the ones that are going to lose if mom and dad get sick mm -hmm. and don't have the assets. Mm -hmm. So that's why long-term care is so yeah. important. And that's, it's, it's so important with our, with our immediate families, with our cousins, with our neighbors because they're the people that are going to say, why didn't you tell me about this? Yeah. And John Milan, if you remember, from, from Knoxville, Tennessee, I know. A, a roundtable member, taught us all a phrase from the main platform, I'd be remiss if I didn't call you and, ask, and offer to talk about long-term care. That phrase, I would be remiss. It's a wonderful uh, 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 icebreaker and courage maker for us because you're saying, you know, I'd be, just like your letter saying, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to sign this because I'd be wrong. Let me give you an idea on a business card okay. I learned a long, long time ago. Still use it? Yeah. 
Good. You sit down with a client, and you turn your business card face down on the table, and you slide it across the table and you say to the client, here's my pen, I want you to write down three names of people that will pay you an income if you get sick or hurt and can't work, or if you will pay your family an income if you die. I want you to write just one, two, or three names. Just write them down on the names that come to your mind. Here's my pen, and just then shut up. And that, he'll sit there, or she'll sit there, and she'll look at that card, and look at you, and look at the card, look at you, mm -mm. and said, there is no one. Hmm. And then I say, turn the card over. Ah, great. That's who will pay you an income if you're sick or hurt and you can't work. It's an amazing industry we learn from each other. We have, we have, there are so many great ideas out there yeah. that, that make such a, and they're so simple that mm -hmm. make such a difference. Yeah.